So, welcome to the balance of payments. Um, sometimes a little bit tricky, but we'll go through the key basic points and hopefully it'll all be clear. And the, the balance of payments is basically um, a record of all financial transactions between one country and other countries. So between the UK and the rest of the world. Um, any <coughs> positive item on the balance of payments is when there's been a purchase of pounds, if we refer to the UK, and that's a credit, and that's an inflow to the UK, okay, such as an export of, say, beer from Britain to other countries. People would buy pounds in order to buy that export. However, if we had an import to the UK, say, of nice French uh, burgundy wine to, to Britain, that would be a negative item, because it would give rise to a sale of pounds in order to buy euros to buy the wine. So that will be a debit item on the balance of payments. So it's important to know what's a credit and what is a debit item. If we look at the, balance, oops, look at the structure of the balance of payments, um, it, it's split into two clear areas. The current account, which includes the balance of trade, and also the financial account. Let's just go through these key points. So the first one, the current account, we have the balance of trade in goods. These are tangible goods like beer and wine, you can drink them for example, and also we have the balance, the net balance of trade in services, so because Britain exports a lot of services, such as education, but more particularly financial services, and, and the total balance, and these are often known as intangibles, because they're intangible I suppose, and so the balance of trade in goods and services is what we call the balance of trade. Now, there's more to the current account, um, there's also net investment income, okay, this comes from abroad, so that's the, basically the balance of income from assets that are owned by British people abroad and by people from abroad in Britain. Uh, uh, and it's the balance of interest, profit and dividends. I'll just give you a little example. If we imagine we've got the UK here and here's abroad, in the UK, say we've got a Nissan car plant, okay, the profits from that car plant go abroad, okay? And it could be the rent or the interest from things that are owned in the UK by people abroad. So the profits go abroad, but we also in Britain own factories, firms, property and financial products abroad, and the profits from those, or rent or interest, comes back to the UK. So the net balance of this profit, that will be negative on the balance payments, that's positive. So the net balance of sometimes called net property income from abroad, this net investment income um, is usually positive for, for Britain. Okay? Um, and that's just the flow of profits from one country to another. Okay? And then we've got net overseas trans transfers. Um, that's usually negative for, for the UK. And it's normally money that we give to the European Union um, as a net budgetary contributor and also overseas aid. So this is the current account, okay? Um, and the current account needs to be balanced by the financial account. If this is negative, this must be positive, so that the whole thing becomes zero, okay? Now on the financial account, two important aspects are the net balance of the foreign direct investment flows, and these are usually positive for the UK. There's more foreign investment into the UK now than there is from the UK to abroad. So just go back to an example. FDI into the UK would be, um, would be a purchase of pounds. Okay, so that would be positive on the balance payments. And FDI from the UK to abroad, such as buying a BP plant abroad, building one, that would be a negative. So overall the balance of foreign direct investment, which are long-term capital flows and fixed capital such as factories, this tends to be positive for the UK. Well also positive is the net balance of portfolio investment. And this is basically the flows of hot money, speculative funds that go where in the world profit is hopefully to be made. So if you're buying shares or bonds or bills or other financial products, often on a short-term basis, then this is recorded under the financial transactions. And this is short-term. These currencies are often called food-loose currencies. And this has grown with globalization of financial markets in the last few decades. And then finally, we've got net transfers of short-term banking flows, that's just flows between the world's banks. And then a key thing is official financing. We've got the um, 
gold and foreign currency reserves held at the central bank, the Bank of England. <coughs> if the Bank of England were to sell gold and buy sterling, that would be a positive, of course, on the balance of payments. If it were to sell, sell its assets such as uh, foreign, foreign exchange reserves of dollars or of uh, euros, again, to buy pounds, that would be a positive. So overall, the balance of payments comes out of zero. If it's negative on the current account, it's positive on the financial account, it becomes zero. Right, the world's current accounts tend to come out of zero. So, for example, the United States currently has a negative current account, whereas China has a very positive current account. And that is matched by the financial accounts, which is for the US. The US has a significantly positive financial account with inflows, rather like Britain. Um, China has a negative financial account, as the saving they have comes out and is invested, for example, in US government bonds. Okay, just, just a quick test now, so you can understand a few things. If, number one, that's a quick test, see if you can do this. New York banker buys pounds as interest rates are expected to go up in the UK. Well, where would that be? Well, it would be here. It would be under the financial account and the net balance portfolio investment flows, and it would be a positive flow into the UK. Okay, one more. Um, Nissan builds a new car plant in the UK. Well, that would be positive uh, credit because they're buying pounds um, in order to build a car plant in the UK, and that will be net balance of FDI, and that will be a positive. And say we've got Barry. Say Barry buys a place in France, well, that would be a net minus financial outflow. Okay, so you'd be selling pounds, buying a place in France, and it would be a capital flow. But say Barry receives rent or profit from his place in France, that would be a positive, and it would be here. It would be under interest, profits, and dividends, and it's positive because he'd take that um, rent or profit in pounds. So it'd be selling euros and buying pounds. And finally, we've got um, you go on holiday abroad, okay, and spend lots of money, say in Italy, in Siena, a great city. Then what you'd be doing is you basically it would be an import and it would be a negative on the balance of trade in services to pay for that lovely hotel in Siena. So I hope the balance of payments now makes sense. Thank you very much. <coughs>